Dear colleagues, now, in treatment of the ovarian cancer, we use two approaches. So the first one is a golden standard. Uh, where we use the primary debulking operation with the following uh, adjuvant therapy and the alternative approach uh, that uh, comprises neoadjuvant therapy. Neoadjuvant therapy is a very linked to the uh, debulking operation and uh, uh, following by uh, chemotherapy. I am not a chemotherapist. Mostly in our department, it's a surgical treatment of the malignancies. This presentation, in this presentation, I won't speak about uh, the medications, uh, the therapeutic regimens, uh, the doses of the neoadjuvant therapy, because I think uh, it's uh, the area of competence of chemotherapists. I will continue the topic that the previous speakers have been talking about, and from my point of view, it's very important in treatment of the ovarian cancer. First of all, uh, I mean uh, their choice of treatment, which way to follow uh, the golden standard or neoadjuvant therapy. Specialists who worked in the federal center in the city, um, uh, at the city level, I would like to look at this issue not only from the point of view of science and research and clinical recommendations, but from the point of view of the practice uh, that we are facing in the Russian Federation. So, the classical criteria for the selection of patients for a German chemotherapy is they have a uh, serious somatic status, the complications, the post-surgery uh, complications. And uh, the second criteria is the impossibility of the optimal um, debulking. So here in the slide, you can see a rather simple um, uh, scheme. And that's what do we do um, about the patients with the uh, ovaries cancer. And uh, the main purpose of uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy is the increase of uh, uh, the uh, reduction and the possibility to reduce the complications and mortality level. As far as I know, in the Russian Federation, uh, this approach is um, uh, most uh, often used in different um, medical institutions. And, uh, Today, at different joint events, conferences, uh, we uh, listen to the criticism uh, the, of this uh, approach because it is uh, less um, effective from the point of view of oncological um, res uh, results and uh, chemical resistance is part of that. And it's also associated with the change of the paradigm in the ovaries uh, cancer treatment which emerged uh, recently. Now, we are um, um, more often using these days the extended um, debulking. And um, uh, today, the situation in the uh, chemotherapy is such that we do not see any uh, revolutionary changes. We're using uh, the same uh, uh, plasma uh, chemotherapy, and uh, unfortunately, the new methods are limited to a great extent. And uh, so, um, we really have to think about the other ways of uh, improving the efficacy. And uh, this is uh, associated with the uh, surgical aggression and how to reduce it. And there are many teams that work in the field, and they have achieved very good results. And uh, uh, and. Uh, 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 the look um, um, at some of the results achieved. You can see that these are quite impressive. The median of survival is uh, 72 months when uh, the concept of uh, complete uh, debulking is used. Now, indeed, uh, today, uh, surgery um, of uh, the ovaries cancer goes beyond the surgery that we usually um, talk about, the extirpation and uh, um, uh, the, the, the uterus with um, uh, um, uh, the, so it goes to the upper levels of the abdomen and sometimes uh, in the past we were very careful, over careful about going that high and if we look at the publications uh, publications and uh, retrospective uh, um, uh, uh, trials, so we can see that survival level of patients with this approach is quite high, and the difference between uh, the non-optimal 
uh, debulking and complete and optimal uh, debulking so demonstrate a great difference and uh, we can see that what the surgeons are doing um, involved in debulking they're all aiming at complete uh, debulking and according to these publications uh, this approach is justified but the situation on the whole in reality is not as good as uh, um, we can find it uh, described on paper. Uh, the share of uh, the uh, debulking um, uh, interventions is varied from uh, 15 to 28 percent um, in different cases. We can see then an optimal um, uh, debulking with further adjuvant chemotherapy uh, it does not have many advantages as compared to non adjuvant uh, chemotherapy uh, with uh, debulking. So, so there is a loss of this meaning indeed um, as a result because there is a risk of complications and uh, most probably might lead uh, to the delay of uh, specific treatment and uh, uh, is not good for a patient at all. We spoke about the criteria of selection of patients. Uh, for um, debulking and uh, the assessment of resectability. And indeed, today, there are no criteria, no clear-cut criteria for the optimal debulking. But the methods that we're using today, um, uh, these methods depend very much on the quality of the um, professionals who work on those who are um, defining the diagnosis. Uh, even the diagnostic laparoscopy, as Igor has said, uh, uh, cannot always um, uh, provide us with an answer you know, whether the optimal um, bulking is possible or not. And um, we often address the criteria of resectability these days, which were published uh, by our colleagues from ESCO. And these are the generally accepted criteria. You can see that uh, these are uh, uh, different um, focal points, and uh, they they, are poten they potentially can be resected. And although these criteria are generally accepted, they are not generally um, applicable and not always used because so much depends on the clinic where the patient is and where the treatment is being planned. All these criteria listed in the slide with the um, uh, potentially uh, um, uh, tumors that go beyond the abdomen um, within the framework of a uh, um, uh, clinic uh, can be shifted to this particular slide where we can find the um, factors of the possibility for debulking. And the uh, clinics are very different in this respect. So why does this all happen? When we listen to the presentations of our colleagues at the conferences and when they say that we must uh, aim at, uh, com uh, at complete debulking because these particular interventions are very effective, we always have a question after working in uh, the practical field. Why? How is that possible? How can we um, implement this particular concept? Uh, we um, uh, understand that um, there must be a team and there must be specialist professionals, medical doctors from different fields involved. And, uh, and uh, the phrase sounds beautiful, but in reality, it is quite e difficult to carry out this work. But the load on um, uh, uh, clinics, oncological clinics, is very heavy these days, and uh, it's very difficult to bring um, people um, and jo build a team. When we talk to colleagues from different oncological centers in Russia, we ask them a question, what is the percentage of debulking uh, with you? And sometimes they say 70 to 80 percent, and there are no publications, no reports. They just uh, these are just words. So when we are uh, involved in this particular work, we must have the database. We must have a proper description. We must have the protocols. We must have um, um, required documents in order to properly assess the results. And then one other thing we need to consider, this is the technical, the equipment. Well, of course, debulking is hardly possible when we have the standard set of uh, instruments and uh, when, when um, as, um, just one uh, monopolar coagulator, for example. So, so the technical equipment of the uh, um, uh, 
surgery, surgical uh, theaters is most important. Another factor to be considered, um, um, it's the, the primary uh, debulking. Um, when we're aiming at complete uh, debulking, it takes um, a whole day. What do we have today? In the regional uh, clinics, in the federal centers, there is one um, um, operation theater, just one. And there is a whole uh, waiting list for months, for months. What can we do? Can we uh, possibly uh, allow a whole day for a surgery on one patient? It's hardly possible um, on a regular basis. And then trans blood transfusion, um, uh, the um, uh, so, um, resuscitation, and many other things. So we know that. Um, in the dispensaries, um, these uh, intensive care and resuscitation uh, departments um, are not always functioning to the full extent. So it's a difficult question indeed. And the long-term stay in the clinic, a uh, long period of rehabilitation, also has a significance because there are quite uh, waiting lists uh, once again. And um, we must uh, think about the routing, about the, um, um, uh, the intervals between the uh, surgeries and chemotherapy must be properly planned because otherwise we get adverse effects and these intervals are not always observed. Time intervals, of course. No adjuvant chemotherapy is less effective, we often say, uh, than um, debulking. And uh, we're trying quite often to to describe that, to speak about that without any practical <clears throat> actions. We sh with all of that, we need to understand that no adjuvant therapy is uh, in great demand for this group of patients because the primary debulking is difficult to implement. There are not enough professionals. Economically, it's also difficult. Um, and um, it's very difficult to coordinate the work of different medical doctors. Uh, uh, now, in most cases, in most uh, clinics, uh, uh, this is hardly possible. At the same time, I would like to say that in our clinical practice, uh, uh, when we work on standards, we uh, rely on the results of randomized trials because randomized trials reflect uh, the efficacy of the technology within the framework of its uh, extrapolation. And what happened uh, uh, within those trials? Here are two trials, the results of which um, uh, we can find in literature. and. Uh, the results uh, were, there are many more trials, but the results were published for this. We could not see that many uh, differences uh, in these two uh, concepts, no, juvenile therapy and uh, primary debulking. Now, well, of course, um, we should understand quite clearly that if uh, with the extensive use of this technology, uh, the um, results are almost similar, then we should uh, uh, try uh, to, um, uh, work to, to use more often the debulking. But no, uh, no, adjuvant uh, chemotherapy is still widely used, and uh, um, it is no worse uh, than uh, primary debulking with the uh, later coming uh, chemotherapy. Now there, um, uh, um, it's um. Uh, the time for the surgeries is quite limited, uh, according to the descriptions, so that's what we can see. But this is what is happening in many of the clinics. Uh, the concept of uh, neurojuvent uh, uh, chemotherapy has certain advantages from the point of view of the post-surgical complications. The difference is uh, four or five times uh, mortality level is also very different. And the um, debulking after uh, neurojuvent uh, uh, therapy um, is much more successful. We should also uh, remember the quality of life of the patients. Yes, there are certain disadvantages of this concept. Uh, neurojuvent chemotherapy can um, uh, create certain technical problems so when we are involved in surgical intervention can uh, lead to certain types of resistances and uh, still these are not critical for the implementation of this concept and at the end of my presentation I would like to draw your attention to the results of the randomized uh, trial which was dedicated to the same problem assessment of the primary um, debulking and um, adjuvant chemotherapy. 
Look at these numbers for today, published by the authors of this particular study. The complications associated with uh, with the third and uh, fourth uh, um, um, grade uh, are almost 10 times higher than the similar indicators uh, for the debulking group. And the mortality level uh, quite, quite high. It was uh, registered for the group of, uh, for the primary um, debulking. And uh, when we uh, think about the selection between uh, neurotuban chemotherapy or debunking, we sh must assess the risks, and the risks must be acceptable. Uh, so today, um, and we know from uh, retrospective and prospective uh, trials uh, uh, that um, um, neurotuban uh, chemotherapy can give um, uh, uh, less um, uh, uh, advantageous results uh, as compared to debulking if the specialists for debulking are properly trained. But in Russia, uh, chemotherapy is still in great demand and is one of those technologies that are extensively used for the cancer patients. Thank you.